I was in a shock state, I would say, like deep in anxiety and stress and eventually depression, uh, which was really, really a difficult, but also kind of felt like, okay, now I really reached the bottom and I was aware this is this is happening for me. Uh, I had this uh, romantic thing that didn't work out and then my job that I thought I was supposed to be a teacher, but I can't, like I can't be in that place. I can't do the tasks that are, want that people want from me. Uh, I can't do my job really. Uh, going to the ocean and going there to the winter bathing club every day has been like, it's like therapy. Um, it's, it's therapeutic in a sense where I can help myself with the ocean. So getting in cold water, you feel an instant shock, like and maybe you can't breathe. But trying to stay in it has really been a practice for me this, this winter. So in that sense, I, f I find it like it's being really helpful in this uh, healing journey. In 2017, start of 2018, I was just uh, beginning as an aspiring Olympic sailor. I don't know if, if my timing was off or if my skipper Joachim, if he did something uh, out of the ordinary, but um, the boom, that it's a big part of the, of the mainsail, it's, that collided with my head, with the back of my head. I got a concussion there and, and quite a bad one. Uh, and at, at this point, I was all sailing. I, I was, I was a sailor, <laughs> and that was all I was and all I wanted to be. Um, but with the concussion, there was a lot of thing that things that um, that was wrong with me. <laughs> My balance was all out of whack, and I couldn't really see all that well, and I couldn't concentrate, and I always had a headache. Um, so I couldn't. I couldn't sail, I couldn't be a sailor, uh, which was so hard for me because most of my identity was hung up on, on, on the sailing part. It felt like I'd, I've, I'd lost some, somebody and that somebody was me, which is, which is even harder. that at that point I knew that this is going to take a while <laughs> for me to recover. Um, I don't remember that, but my mom told me that I was drowning when I was uh, around three years old. She, she just took me on her arms. She was still holding me in the, in the water and maybe this changed the, the whole story. Instead of having a trauma, I knew that the water can be dangerous, but it also can be soothing.
when I want to snorkel or when I want to dive, I just do it. And um, I feel like I'm, I'm looking for an adventure. I'm chasing the risk. Um, and sometimes I was really pushing myself to the edge to stay because I wanted to explore one more, just one more cave, one more cave. And it was very, very close to almost like passing out. But it gives me this kind of, you know, feeling a little bit of adrenaline and like pushing my boundaries and taking this risk. And after when I'm on the shore, maybe I have some cuts on my knees because the wave throw me on the rocks. And even those cuts feels good. I mean, I feel like a lot of things are happening in our heads and our body is capable of doing much, much more than we think. That is even like winter bathing, you know, your brain is telling you when you go to the water, you run, you're going to die in a few seconds, which is not true, right? It's a survival mechanism that serves in order to keep you alive, right? This is why I'm trying to trick maybe a little bit of my, my own brain and this survival system. But it feels a little bit like out of the body experience. I think I feel most connected to the water or most at one with the ocean when I'm doing the night passages. I feel like an extension of the boat or the, the boat is an extension of you. Yeah. I have I have this specific memory of, of a night passage I did with a friend, which is like a 12, 14 hours trip. He went to sleep, and it was just it was just me, and I, I I couldn't really see much besides this this light that was so far away, and I knew that that was kind of the direction that I needed to go. And the hours they just they just passed so quickly, and I wasn't contemplating my life. I wasn't really thinking about anything. I was just there. I think after the accident and after the concussion, uh, I realized that there was more to life than just the sailboat racing. I said before that that I lost someone and that someone was was me, but I think also I was I was grieving the loss of the connection with the, with the sea. There has been a few moments when I really practice this winter bathing where those that feeling of being like not separate but connected which I would describe as some sort of ego death because the ego is separate and wants to separate uh, from everything.
there is some kind of meditative state there where I've, I've felt really, really like I was a part of a bigger thing. Um, not like, not a big violent experience, not like a, like where I thought I would die or, yeah. So it is a big part of my transformation right now. But I don't think I will ever stop transforming. <laughs> I think I will constantly develop, but I, and I didn't know how huge uh, an impact it would have on me in this healing journey that I feel like I'm on.